Early Friday morning, Venezuelan authorities denounced that a sabotage caused a blackout that affected several states in the country. The World Health Organization confirmed a humanitarian polio vaccination campaign for the population in the Gaza Strip. And in Russia, a total of more than 100 speakers from 23 countries participated in the BRICS Plus Young Diplomats Forum in the Republic of Bashkortostan on Wednesday. Hello and welcome to From the South. My name is Berendi Los Santos. I'm from Tesla Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. Early Friday morning, Venezuelan authorities denounced a sabotage that caused a blackout that affected several states in the country. The Ministry of Communication denounced that Venezuela has been a victim once again of an electrical sabotage that caused damages in several territories of the country, including the capital. At this moment, the electoral cabinet is working for the total restoration of the service. In this sense, Freddy Nanez, Minister of Communication, declared that a special operation has been activated in Caracas for surface transportation and also stressed that nobody will take the peace away from the Venezuelan people. On the other hand, Diosdado Cabello, the new Venezuelan Minister of the Interior, also denounced that last Tuesday the blackouts that occurred in several parts of the country were the result of terrorist attacks carried out by the extreme right wing. And in Venezuela, President Nicolás Maduro announced the implementation of a new economic model based on productive engines and aimed at BRICS, which represents the economy of the future. During a meeting with the representatives of the national banking, insurance and security sectors within the framework of the country's economic recovery, the Venezuelan head of state expressed that the country's economy has been heading towards the pluripolar world of the BRICS for several years now. In this sense, President Maduro explained that the BRICS have emerged as an alternative for those free states of the world that seek an economy independent of the United States of America. He also emphasized that the peoples of the world are working on the construction of a new path and joint mechanisms and that Venezuela is no exception. And in addition to this, the national executive affirmed that Venezuela will not depend on the National Centers for Foreign Commerce, CADIVI, thanks to the development of the new economic model in the country. Let's listen. Of the emergence of a new economic model that is being implemented today. So it is a very important element. The public banks, the private banks, well, the Venezuelan Central Bank as the highest monetary authority in the country, have a great responsibility to ensure that this exchange rate system remains robust, whatever the situation may be and that it will be strengthened from now on. They have the great responsibility of ensuring that this exchange system remains robust, regardless of the circumstances, and that it is strengthened from now on. And what I can tell you as President of the Republic and the highest authority of the public finances, you know that you can count on my full support so that we may continue drawing building and strengthening the exchange system that Venezuela has created in these difficult years, which will transcend and survive in the years to come, have no doubt, we will never go back to the National Centers for Foreign Commerce, nor to the Office of Differential Exchange Regime. And we continue in Venezuela as the permanent representative of the country to the United Nations, Samuel Moncada, presented evidence before the National Assembly on the interference of the United States against his country. The Venezuelan ambassador stated that the U.S. government used a false narrative abroad to destabilize the Venezuelan people during the July 28th presidential elections. He also indicated that Washington planned the creation of a parallel National Electoral Council to replace the official results. Moncada pointed out that the U.S. strategy was practiced for 20 years against Venezuela and applied a recipe of destruction and colonization 
to the electoral system. We are experiencing a coup d'état, but this time a coup d'état that penetrated our electoral system and so far what is understood to have happened, it would seem that it was a local action, something that the Venezuelans did, join us, some geniuses of the opposition. And what I want it to be understood is that it was a strategy made from abroad by the US government and it is a strategy that, you will see, it has been practiced for 20 years in different parts of the world and what they applied to us was a recipe of destruction and colonization of the electoral system to impose local agents that favor the interests of the United States. In other news, the president of Mexico, Andres Manuel López Obrador, declared on Thursday that if the government had any new information about the so-called Ayotzinapa case, he would meet with the family of the 43 teacher training students who disappeared in the state of Guerrero almost 10 years ago. The president said that the most important thing is to find the boys and then they would meet again. Otherwise, they would only deliver the last report of everything that is being done. At the same time, social organizations and even the mothers and fathers of the students of Iguala in Ayotzinapa claim that it was a commitment unfulfilled by the government of the Fourth Transformation, headed by López Obrador. And in Ecuador on Thursday, five members of the Coordination of Organizations for the Unity of the Left managed to reach an agreement aimed at the construction of solutions to solve the crisis in the South American nation. Let's listen. For the defense of dignified life, peace, sovereignty, social organizations, political parties and movements of the center-left and progressive tendency, in the framework of the meeting of social organizations of the country, we have formed a technical table, and after several working meetings, we present to the country the following agreement with a view to programmatic unity and the construction of immediate solutions to the current crisis that Ecuador is experiencing. And Bolivian judicial authorities confirmed on Thursday that the trial for the Sincata massacre against former de facto President Janine Añez Former ministers, former military and police commanders in 2019 will begin on September the 2nd. The state prosecutor's office said that the fourth criminal sentencing court of the city of El Alto has set the hearing for the beginning of the oral, public and contradictory trial for Monday, September 2nd this year. Aeneas and other former authorities were accused of genocide and other crimes after the attack against civilians in November 2019 in the Sencata area in the city of El Alto, the Department of La Paz. And now let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates, and much more. We'll be right back, stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. The World Health Organization confirmed a humanitarian pause in combat for a polio vaccination for the population in the Gaza Strip. During a virtual press conference, the agency's representative in Palestine, Rick Pepercon, assured that more than one million doses are already in Palestinian territory, while another 400,000 will be shipped soon. Pepercon also noted that the campaign will begin in central Gaza with a three-day lull in the fighting, then move to the south and then to the north with similar periods of cessation of hostilities to support the vaccination. It is important to note that the parties reached an agreement shortly before the Security Council held an emergency meeting on the humanitarian situation in the enclave. A two-round polio vaccination campaign is uh, will actually start on the 1st of September in the Gaza Strip. During each round of the campaign, 
the Palestinian Ministry of Health in collaboration with WHO, UNICEF, UNRWA, and partners will provide uh, will will provide two drops of the novel oral polio vaccine type two, so-called NOPV two, to more than 640,000 children under 10 years of age. And the armed forces of Yemen revealed on Thursday new images of the attack carried out against the Greek oil tanker Sunion, which was heading to Israeli ports. The military information headquarters of the Yemeni army Al Alam Al Harbi emphasized that the ship was attacked for ignoring the law prohibiting the entry of vessels to the port of occupied Palestine in the Red Sea. For his part, the head of the Sana negotiating delegation announced that the Asrallah agreed to tow the damaged tanker after negotiations with the European parties and concerns about a possible environmental pollution disaster. Since November 2023, Yemen has carried out military operations against Israeli targets and their allies in the framework of support for the Palestinians under attack in the occupied territories. And in other news, for a second consecutive day, the Israeli occupation forces continued their aggression against the governorates of Yemen and Tulkaram in the occupied West Bank, the largest since the 2002 invasion while withdrawing from Tubas. The aggression in the northern West Bank has so far caused the death of 18 citizens, including eight in Yemen, six in Tulkaram and four in Tubas, according to medical sources, bringing the total number of deaths since October 7th in the West Bank to 668. And in other news, August 30th marks the International Day of the Victims of Enforced Disappearances in honor of the memory of men and women victims of this crime in all countries around the world. This date was established by the United Nations General Assembly in December of 2010, when it was observed that it was commemorated in several countries around the world. However, in Latin America, the date of August 30th was proposed in 1981 by the Latin American Federation of Associations of Relatives of Disappeared Detainees as the International Day of the Disappeared Detainee. The purpose of this commemoration is to reflect on the horror of this crime, considered a crime against humanity, by the OAS and the UN. And now we have a second short break coming up, but before we invite you to visit our YouTube channel at Teleso English, there you will be able to re-watch our interviews, top stories, special broadcastings and more. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell to stay up to date on the world's most recent events. Final short break, don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. In Russia, a total of more than 100 speakers from 23 countries participated in the BRICS Plus Young Diplomats Forum in the Republic of Bashkortostan. This week, on this first day, the attendees discussed issues related to the main areas of interaction between the BRICS countries and their partners. The main topic of discussion focused on cultural and humanitarian cooperation in the BRICS areas. In addition, the young diplomats also discussed the world economy and the financial system. On these issues, the Deputy Director of the European Department of the Venezuelan Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ernesto Bourdier, emphasized the importance of using the national currencies of the association in international transactions. We now move on to other topics in Ecuador, in the outskirts of Quito, a flora and fauna sanctuary, with endemic and threatened species confront environmentalists and mining companies over legal loopholes. A 2023 referendum banned all new mineral extraction in 124,000 hectares of the Andean Choco, a rainforest rich in gold and part of the World Biosphere Reserve. 
However, environmentalists and the majority of the inhabitants maintain that nothing has changed since then in the area covered by the decision taken by the majority of the capital's electorate as mining continues and they demand that the national government and local authorities order the suspension of these activities. La gente fue... The people were loud and clear. 70% of the district's population told the authorities that, in the Andes Chaco, in the Biosphere Reserve, in these territories, we do not want mining and this has to be respected. They are very fragile ecosystems, taking hummingbirds into account, for example. Imagine in these species, these very small animals, the implications of an explosion to break the rock, the opening of a road to be able to bring in large trucks, tractors, it would be terrible. It would wipe out all this biodiversity. In Syria, drought is threatening apple and grape harvest in the northeastern province of Hasake along the region's lifeline, the Karbo River. The drought has added to the misery of farmers already struggling to make ends meet after 13 years of war, the growing effects of climate change and a grueling economic crisis that has seen long power cuts and fuel shortages. Death is better than our life. When a person sees his fields dying, he dies too. Our life has no meaning. Our life depends on our land. Our life comes from the water. Our life depends on our work. We have no life left. Not only our crops are dead, but we are also dead. I have a 12-acre vineyard from which I only harvested 200 boxes of grapes this season. In previous years, I harvested 2,000 boxes of grapes from the same plot of land. Now I harvest one box of grapes from seven trees. In the past, I harvested three boxes of grapes from just one tree. In human rights stories of citizens from 33 countries reached screens of more than 30 municipalities and 8 cities in Colombia in the 11th edition of the International Human Rights Film Festival, presented from August 22nd to 30th. For more details, Valeria Cardona, our correspondent in Colombia. La historia de the story of this possession in La Esmeralda and Loma de Tigre, Acacias, in the Department of Meta, which began in 2012 after the arrival of the old companies Repsol and Ecopetrol, comes to the Cinematheque in Bogota as part of the International Human Rights Film Festival. The dispossession is that their livelihood, their means of living, their water, their local economy, their culture were taken away. Everything has been perverted. Community life is no longer the same as it was before. Although some of the inhabitants are still the same because others have already left, community life is over, among other things, because the oil issue has created a huge floating population that means that the community decisions are no longer made by them, but by the floating population. That on one side. On the other side, access to resources and access to public services is non-existent because the municipality does not provide them and because the commitment made by Ecopetrol to build an aqueduct has been trying to be built for more than 10 years, and it has not been achieved. This is a story that was never created for the movie theaters, but rather to systematize the process of accompaniment by the Corporation of Support to Popular Women, Kodakov, was filmed with a single camera by its producer, Juliana Echeverri, who during a long process managed to focus on the testimonies of the women of Acacias to denounce the serious situation to which they have been subjected for more than 10 years. The problems are many and they are of different kinds, aren't they? So there is the water, but there are also the smells, for example, the noises, and besides that, it is difficult to show it. How do I tell people? Look, what is happening here is that it is smelling very bad, or this is what it sounds like here. Well, it is very difficult to capture this with a camera and a microphone, but I think the women have very convincing testimonies. Once the foundation Juliana worked for saw the results, they thought they could submit it to platforms and festivals that will help them make it more visible to reach more people and have an eco in the denunciation of this problem and raise awareness about the importance of water. 
de nada, siempre las comunidades insisten, oro no, petróleo no, agua sí. Y es First que... and foremost, the communities always demand no gold, no oil, yes water. And the fact is that water is what is going to allow us to continue living in human conditions as well, to allow species and life itself to survive. Therefore, this type of action is of enormous strategic value, enormous, and of course we are very interested in the fact that in some way we are thinking about re-establishing the rights of the population and of this type of women who have been so seriously affected by this issue. El cortometraje de 22 minutos. The 22 minute short film was presented together with the production Sex Penguin, a short film that portrays the story of a letter of forgiveness from a friend. The Genere, a film about the dreams that a 60 year old man fulfills for his deceased best friend and lineage. The story of a secret buried by a Biblian that speaks through the voice of a relief. All directed by women and presented at the International Human Rights Festival. Valeria Cardona, Telesur, Bogotá, Colombia. And like this, we have come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at telesorenglish.net. And also join us on social media. We are on Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram, and also on TikTok. And that was the end of our news brief. See you next time.